Hello, welcome to uh, another episode of Revamped Outdoors. I swear, this one is um, actually outdoor related. Kind of. All right, so this, all right, 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 now is a home light. <clears throat> <clears throat> is a home light Super Two chainsaw. Uh, they're pretty old. It's all metal. All right. I was hoping that ting more. That sounds kind of like plastic, but it's actually a metal case. Um. When's the last time you saw one of those switches? Eh? It's been a while. Anyway, the Home Light Super 2 is a pretty popular chainsaw for a lot of arborists because um, it's really kind of a lightweight saw, but a strong construction. It can handle up to like an 18 inch bar, which uh, this one's a 16, but it can handle up to an 18 and uh, has a really high torque to weight ratio. So, this one, this little beauty here, came up in a online auction, an estate auction. Ended up getting this thing for about uh, twenty dollars, right? So twenty bucks, not bad. Only problem is with used saws, a lot of the times you don't get the chain guard. Well, well, with chain cover. Well, we <laughs> we got a three D printer. So, what we're gonna go over today is how to make something like this all right how to make that without actually physically taking any measurements and I'll explain that in a second but this one was only taken uh, just with pictures and uh, pictures of the tape measure near the object so I think it works pretty well just hold it on with a the bungee there on two holes here and it comes off just like that and there you go not gonna cut yourself so let's jump into uh, fusion 360 and I'll show you how I piece this together without uh, actual physical measurements let's do it and what I have done this is the overall completed design so there's been a lot that went into this but I'll try and just glance over kind of what I did so this is what the extruded body looks like but we will take that out of there and just add in specific sketches as we go so initially what I had done was I put in the picture that I took so I didn't take any written measurements all I did was I put an attached canvas onto the design that's not right I put an attached canvas down on a sketch right and then I had in the picture on the same plane as what I wanted to measure so this tape measure is lying on the bar here and uh, from the teeth of the chain so I know it's actually sitting on there so then I can set this canvas so when I bring in the attached canvas you go insert uh, attached canvas you find your what you wanted right put that in there select the image it comes in very very small right but what you can do is you go over to your canvases and you right click and you say calibrate so basically what it's gonna do is take two points from the calibration so I know this is one inch right 25.4 millimeters so I can go here and here right and then I can set that in my global. So whatever I put in here is going to be what it is. So I'll keep it there. It's 25.5. A little bit off, but not bad. So keep that in there. So now I know that my picture is set up to what the, what the tape measure was, right? So then it's just a function of doing a spline around the outside of the chain. So I know that these blue marks that are showing up. I know those are going to be the right size around the chain. And then I want to have a wall on the outside, so I've made that four millimeters off of that. So then I know I have the wall there. 
and then I just inferred some of this, right? So this, as it turns out in our actual physical copy, let's see. So in our actual physical copy, you can see that this right here nestles into this, this side portion. portion. So this portion right here is this area. And then this back portion here is the back side of the saw, right? So I'm just inferring where this is going to go. So then, I don't know, I can't really, there we go. Right? So then what we have is this area is represented here on the side. So all this has been modeled then without needing to take specific measurements of like this distance to here, this distance to here. Is this 100% accurate all the time? Obviously, no. There's some inconsistencies, but um, for some sort of functional object like this where your clearance isn't that important, this seemed to work out really well, right? So I'll just walk through some of what I did. It's nothing really big deal, but so you just end up, uh, let's put the bodies back in. So all I'm doing there is just press pulling these specific areas. Then I'll set up a sketch the opposite way. So I'll have a sketch in here somewhere. Yep. Nope, wrong. It's one of these. There we go. So then I'll have a sketch on a perpendicular plane in which I can drag that sketch through with a uh, like a sweep I think is what I did right so I wanted to take this 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 apparently this and this too right so then I can come up here I can create a sweep I have my profile of eight selected there but then you can choose these areas these have all so then you can choose these areas for the sweep so that's all I did there so then it sweeps it out gives it kind of a nice almost finished look a little bit so then the next thing we have to do is we have one direction so all I did again let's see let's find that other sketch so all I did here again was take a photo with a tape measure where I wanted those specific dimensions to be. And I set my canvas, I calibrated again, I went over here, went to the canvas, calibrate, set that to my 25.4 with the inches. So then I know that in three dimensional space, my chainsaw that I'm looking at is actually in real dimensions, right? So it should scale up that photo to everything else. So that chainsaw in Fusion 360, if I were to reach through that screen, pull it out, is actually the same size as the one in real life, right? So then I just set these dimensions of the outer cowling here. Set those the same, found the width of my uh, chain itself and the bar, how much I wanted to extrude that out. And then we're left with this. So when we overlay that sketch, you can see how that works, right? I ex press pull these out. Then I cut a certain portion of those out with this, right, as I press pull. So I'll cut that out. Bodies aren't showing up. Something like that, right? I'll pick and choose which parts are going to get cut out. And that takes a series of iterations. Like, did this work? That didn't work? Things like that. Not a huge deal. Um, but more than the scope of this video, you can... Uh, look up Fusion 360 and stuff and just play around with it. A lot of it, a lot of this stuff probably I'm doing it a long way that's probably not exactly right either, but it ends up working. So, what you end up, I did this secondarily. I got secondarily, sure. I ended up getting a logo online, just a small um, GIF, converted that to an SVG. So, this is actually the Home Light logo. And then I just put a little giver in there. You got a giver. Um, to print this out, I did a split body function. So all I did was add a sketch 
probably be one of my later sketches there, yeah. Which one is it? Oh no, actually I did it on my sketch one. I just came up with dimensionally how tall I wanted it to print on the Anet A8. So I made it, uh, I think I did like a hundred and 130, 140 millimeters tall for each of these pieces. And then I just have them indexed in there. Let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? Probably this way, the middle shown. So I just have them indexed with two small posts and then two small holes. And I print these, I end up printing these like this on the bed. So the posts up and then you don't have to deal with any support material or anything. And then you can just glue them all together. And what you end up with is this. So you can see where these are glued together. I used a brim uh, to keep these supported on the bed. I'll break that brim off pretty soon. This is in PETG. You can see at the front that there's a little tab there because if we bring in the front of the guard, what I did is I just put a platform on there, really thin, I think it's like 0.4 millimeters, but that platform just helps it adhere to the bed because if you don't, um, what it ends up being is very hard to just print on that tip and make it work all the way up through here. So uh, I think the infill is only about, I think I did about 10%. I like 10% on structural things with PETG. Uh, seems to work well. Saves you quite a bit of time and filament uh, as well as not doing the uh, infill at 100%. And it seems to be uh, quite rigid. So pretty happy on how this turned out. I may try and print this out again in like an orange to match the home light. Um, especially because I went through and embossed all these SVG files. But I thought this was something that's pretty cool. If anybody has a, a home light Super 2 with a 16-inch bar and wants this file, I'll post it on Thingiverse, no problem. Yeah, so I think this is outdoorsy because uh, as outdoorsmen, a lot of times we'll go to these areas that uh, you know don't see a lot of human influence. Sometimes you have to clear brush. Sometimes you got to move stuff around. Sometimes you got to clear a road had that happen quite a bit especially living out west for a little while you'll be on a forest road that hasn't seen a person for two three months you're going to need that chainsaw so it's better to have a guard on it you're not getting all beat up and stuff otherwise i hope it uh inspired you in some way to do something with your own tools uh with your own workshop and your own maker space um and i i think it's a great technique to just take pictures with the ruler um, instead of actually having to take dimensions and create a picture. I know you'll hear a lot of people say, start with the diagram first, do this and that. For me, it's just way easier if it's something that's not exactly, doesn't need specific clearance, you know, for certain parts or tolerances, whatever, whichever one that is. If it doesn't need that. Um, I'd rather just quickly bang it out with... Um, just Fusion 360 and calibrate my photos. And it seems to work well. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Love to have you around. Been doing a lot of videos. I got a CR10 enclosure video coming up. I actually designed an air scrubber for it. So I'm going to start printing in ABS quite a bit more. And I wanted to make sure that those particles stay uh, in a filter, activated carbon, instead of just all over the house, which eh, not the best, you know? Um, so stay tuned if that's something you like. If you feel like it, just uh, go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't mean anything uh, to me. It's not like it's a metric I use to define my self-worth. Well, hopefully you did enjoy the video. I'm Elliot. Keep your amps up and your filament dry.